Welcome Knife World, this is Ryan from Knife Pivot Loop, here today to talk about how to tune and perfect one of the most popular knives on the market. We're talking about the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And to demonstrate today, I've got one of the Blade HQ exclusives. This is the Ghost Green G10 model in CPM M4. This knife also features the black diamond light carbon coating on the blade, which gives it this nice matte black color. Now to get started, we're gonna go ahead and disassemble this knife so we can talk about what I like to do to make this knife perform at its very best. We are using a driver set with Weha bits. It's important to use high quality bits as you disassemble these knives so that you're not stripping those Torx bits as you remove them from the knife. We're gonna go ahead and remove all of those and get ready for the next step. All right, I've got all those screws removed. I'm also gonna remove the tail clip on this knife. Tip up, you knife heathens who use it the other way are just wrong. But I'm gonna pull that apart so that we can disassemble this knife fully. Now, once you've got those screws out, the easiest way to disassemble this knife is to simply lift those scales and rotate them slightly to get things out of the way. This barrel bushing likes to stay in place. That's actually oversized and helps give the knife structural rigidity. So we're gonna slide that to the side and then remove the remainder of the parts. We've got the blade here. These phosphor bronze washers are pretty fragile. You wanna remove those off to the side without bending them. We'll set the blade down over here and the other phosphor bronze washer We've got a bushing that sets in the center of that blade pivot, uh, a bushing at the rear of the knife, and then the stop pin right here. Let's set those off to the side. Now, you can actually damage the scales on these knives if you try to pry these two halves apart. So what I've got here is a disassembly tool. This is made by SDK. I'll include a link to it down in the description, but it is made just to slide in between those two scales. And then it's got a simple screw and press feature that'll push that bushing right out of the scale with just a few easy turns. I'll go ahead and do that and then release the tension, pull it out of the way. And now you can see that scale will just pop right off and we'll set that off to the side as well. Stainless steel liner, move that up here. And then we've got the bushing set in this other side and another stainless steel liner. These can be a little tricky to pop out. We're gonna try to disassemble this fully and we can do that again using this press. So we'll push the bushing out of the other side a few turns and feel it release a bit. Move it to the side and we should have that bushing out now. Um, we will pop this liner out of the scale and now the paramilitary 2 is fully disassembled. Now that we've got her depart, we can do all of our fun tricks to make this knife that is already awesome, absolutely spectacular. Now. I myself prefer a smooth grip on these scales. Uh, reason for that is that it does a lot less damage to your pocket. Also, I feel like the Paramilitary 2, when it's together, has a really good shape that gives you plenty of traction without needing that really sharp texture on these G10 scales. I'll show you on the mic under the microscope what it looks like right now, and then we'll take a look again after I have done some polishing. Move this over to the microscope and focus that in. And you can see that that G10 has this really aggressive, kind of a waffle texture that's pressed into it. That texture is actually made of um, glass fibers encased in a resin. And so it's very, very hard and uh, pretty aggressive. It'll actually rip up your pants. I've included a picture here so you can see some damage that's done by these knives uh, when you wear them frequently. We're gonna go ahead and polish that down. I'll show you how we do it. So I've got my G10 scales here. We're gonna use sandpaper to sand these scales down to a smooth finish. We wanna do that carefully so that we're not making things uneven or making things look really strange as we do it. So I've got right here a dish that we're gonna to use to hold in some of the water. As we're sanding these scales, we don't want a bunch of uh, glass fiber to get into the air. So we're gonna spray things down and make sure that that dust can't become airborne. I've just set this tray over top of things. Now you're gonna need an extremely flat surface what I've gone and done is I have bought a porcelain tile from the hardware store. This cost me all of a dollar, but any you know extremely flat surface will work. You can use a pane of float glass, so you know window glass or a mirror that you find around the house. Uh, extremely flat tile. You're looking for something with really that mirror surface. 
Uh, I've even used my granite countertops in a pinch. And we are going to take some sandpaper. I'm gonna start off today with 400 grit uh, wet dry sandpaper because that does a nice job of taking off this texture without doing you know, too much damage to those scales. You don't wanna thin them down as much as you just wanna smooth things out. We're gonna open this up and get started. All right, I've got my sheet of sandpaper here. I do have some water, as we discussed. We don't want those glass fibers getting into the air, so I'm gonna spray this down a bit just to keep things wet. I will add some water under the sandpaper that'll help hold it down as well. And what we're going to do is using even pressure, we're gonna take the surface of these scales face down on the sandpaper, and we're just gonna slide the, these scales back and forth a number of times. Now, we don't wanna to push too hard on any one area of the scale. We don't wanna be pushing on the rear or the front or the middle. We want even pressure across that scale. And so what we're going to do is just move it very carefully, not pushing down too hard, even pressure everywhere, and we're just braiding that surface. As you go and do this, you can stop on occasion and look at how far you've gotten. You'll start to see that that texture will get lighter and lighter. Now, some people like to just simply dull that texture a bit so that it's not quite as aggressive. I actually like to give mine a bit of a polish, so I'm gonna go longer than somebody might typically go who is just looking to uh, round things off. Alright, that 400 grit sandpaper has worked really slowly. Uh, we actually, although this looks pretty dirty, we've actually removed very little of these scales, uh, preserving the shape overall and just removing some of that texture. I'm going to go ahead and wash these off and we're going to take a look at them under the microscope now that we've done our initial sanding. Alright, I hope you can see that already we've removed those ridges and bumps we're left basically with just the texture of the fabric itself on these scales and they feel incredibly smooth to the finger. Uh, we can go even further if we want and get this especially smooth. I think we've gone far enough. Let's move on to the other scale. All right, we've got that second scale polished up with the 400 grit sandpaper. Uh, both of these are as smooth as you need them for everyday use. If you wanna go further, you can go ahead and move on to something like a 1000 and even a 2000 grit sandpaper for that true mirror finish. We're gonna stick with 400 because I like these just a little bit grippy. All right, as an added side effect, these scales are gonna pick up much less dirt in the future because this surface is absolutely smooth. All we've got is the weave of the fabric, giving it a little bit of texture and those 400 grit scratches, it feels silky smooth and it's gonna stay very clean. Next, we are going to polish up these phosphor bronze washers. Now this is something, again, you can do if you have a very flat surface. So I'm using this tile and a piece of paper to hold a little bit of polishing compound. So I'm gonna set these carefully on here. Again, you don't wanna bend these and they are quite fragile. So I'm gonna move them over carefully and we're gonna polish them up. You can use a compound like Flitz. I'm actually using a compound called Simichrome, which is used by uh, musical instrument players to polish their um, brass instruments. And we're just gonna put a little bit of this on the paper and use that as a polishing compound. This is full of tiny grits of uh, aluminum oxide that's gonna help us to polish these up. So we're gonna take one of these washers and very carefully without bending it I'm just going to move that around through that paste in a figure eight pattern so that we're polishing it up. The paper is going to hold on to that paste and allow it to start to do its work and very quickly it's going to start smoothing out that surface. We don't want to remove very much from the surface of these phosphor bronze washers. We don't want to change their dimensions. We're just giving them a very light polishing. And if we can look in the microscope, we'll take a, a peek at what things look like before we started versus what this polished washer looks like. 
This is the washer straight out of the knife, what it looks like from the factory. You can see that there's some oxidation on there. Focus in. Uh, things just are not very smooth. Here is the washer that we've done some polishing on. Already you can see that our surface is much smoother. There are some scratches that we're gonna continue to polish out. Uh, there are even some circumferential scratches that we'll really wanna get out using this Simichrome. All right, although these washers look pretty close to mirrored to the naked eye, you can see they've still got some scratches from that compound. We're gonna go ahead and move next to a 0.5 micron diamond compound. You can stop now if you don't have something like that. We're gonna take it one step further. All right, now we've got our diamond spray. We're just gonna use a little bit of this again on some paper. That's just to hold the grit, and we're gonna use this to give these a final polish. that comp those compounds we've taken those uh, washers from where they were to a mirror finish there we go so we've mirror finished though with those just using a little bit of compound now that we've gotten those uh, mirrored um, from where they started we're gonna clean them off really well we'll just use some alcohol and a rag and wipe those down again being very careful not to crimp or bend them All right, and now that we've got our knife smoothed out, we've polished these washers to a mirror finish. We've got the knife cleaned inside and out. We're gonna put it back together and see how well it works. I'm gonna begin the assembly now. We're using some Loctite to hold those screws in place once they're there. I really like this Loctite 248, which is a gel product because it won't get everywhere while you're using it. You can just open this up, set it to the side, and then dip your screws in that product and grab a little bit as you're assembling the knife back together. Let's proceed. Just gently tighten these pivot screws until we're ready for final tuning. Before we fully reassemble this, we're gonna add a drop of knife pivot lube to the surface of each one of these washers. Just a single drop will do it. And then we'll place the blade in place. We're also gonna add one drop to the inside of this race where the blade touches on that bushing. Set that down into place. While we're at this, we're also gonna add one drop of Knife Pivot Loop Heavy to this detent track. It's nice because we can see this while it's open. This is where that detent rides along the side of the blade. One single drop is gonna do great and it's gonna hold in place there, keeping the knife nice and smooth. Continue to assemble. We've got the other mirrored phosphor bronze washer. We're gonna place that in place carefully. Set that on top. And then this other scale will go down into place. Starting with the rear end, we're going to compress that bushing carefully so that we don't break anything. And then making sure that things are lined up, we're going to put in this pivot screw. Again, only tightening gently until we're ready for final assembly. We'll just secure that in place a little bit and then adding the remainder of the screws to this knife. Okay, and now that we've got all those screws installed, we're going to carefully tighten these pivot screws, making sure that our blade ends up centered, or as centered as it was at least when we got it from the factory, and also making sure that our action feels really nicely. We don't want to over-tighten, 
and that Loctite is what we're going to be relying on for holding these screws into place. All right, we've got this blade just about dialed in. We're tightening these very carefully, making sure that we've got the blade tight. We don't have any movement side to side, but also that we get that drop shut action. And we're going to take a feel of this. This is quite a lot tighter lockup than we had from the factory. We have much less movement side to side and the action is much, much smoother because we've gotten rid of that oxidation and the unevenness in those washers. Also, the feel of this knife is much better. We've got it smooth and we can get that grip from the shape of the knife rather than from the aggressive texturing on the handle. So we've taken an almost perfect knife and made it absolute perfection. That's how we do it here at Knife Pit Loop.